Welcome to another episode of Alberta Stories. I'm your host, Todd Strickland. Alberta Stories has invited people connected to the storyteller to come narrate the story. Today, I'll be the narrator for my friend Mitchell S. Jackson. I've known Mitch for over 25 years. We've worked together, laughed together, and held respect for one another. I've worked with my boy Todd for the last couple of years, um, documentary projects, and he's like the steady artistic vision of my uh, shoots. He always has a unique angle or um, is looking for um, catch, capturing a moment that I didn't know existed until I go back and look at the, the footage. Every time I get to do something that I think is special, I ask myself, how the hell did I get here? It might not be important to somebody else, but like Northeast is everything to me. I've seen a lot of things since Residue has come out. I've been in some rooms that I definitely didn't think I was gonna be in. I've had conversations with people that I didn't think that I was going to have. And I know that it all has come out of me essentially trying to preserve my personal history. That's what I did in Residue. And now my job is not just to preserve my personal history here, but to preserve the history of my people in this place. Many of us, when we think of gymnastics, picture Simone Biles or Gabby Douglas. Yet ask Mitchell S. Jackson about the greatest gymnast he's ever seen in person, and he'll take you back to 6th and Mason, the street he grew up on in Alberta neighborhood. He lived with his great-grandparents on one end of the block. His brother's mother's house sat on the other, and they all had front row seats to witness the feats of Charles Kane. Backflips was just a, a thing. A lot of kids couldn't, and a lot of kids could. Unfortunately, I was, I was kind of taught myself, and I taught my, my relatives, my brothers and sisters as well. We would be outside playing, and Charles would like be doing backflips down the whole block, like from where my brother's mother's house was to my house, which was, to me, like, superhuman. Years later, Jackson is now a critically acclaimed author, filmmaker, professor, and advocate for criminal justice reform, who takes the experiences and wisdom he gained growing up on Alberta and shares them with the world. His award-winning debut novel, The Residue Years, has been praised by the New York Times, the Paris Review, and the Times of London, amongst many others. Its honors include the Whiting Award, and the Ernest J. Gaines Prize for Literary Excellence. Jackson has also served as a TED Fellow and speaks at prisons and youth facilities both in the United States and abroad. His work has been acclaimed for how it pushes forward the discussion on black masculinity, family relationships, and the criminal justice system. Key to this has been authenticity, and Jackson speaks from first-hand experience on the intersection of all three. In a few short years, he went from a storied Jefferson High School basketball team to petty drug dealing and eventually serving 16 months in prison. As he detailed in an essay for the Portland Tribune titled Almost Famous, this fate was unfortunately common for many former athletes where he grew up. Young black men who were fed an emphasis on sports stardom and little else, then were left searching for that prestige in all the wrong places after the glory days were over. Instead of letting traditional narratives reduce these people to their convictions, or more broadly reduce Northeast Portland's black community to gangs and crime, Jackson has used his writing to give layers to these people's stories. He prides himself on telling the stories you wouldn't hear about if left to outsiders. For example, in the summer before fourth grade, he remembers taking an encyclopedia his grandparents bought from the door-to-door -door salespeople and convincing his friends that instead of playing outside and enjoying the sun, they should study for the upcoming school year. What I remember is the feeling of thinking, I have power in this neighborhood, and I can talk to these guys who want to tumble and ride go-karts and play basketball for the whole day all summer into coming into my house and reading encyclopedias and studying. Um, and, and, and so, to me, that's like also a part of a neighborhood. It's like all of those guys remembered me years later, and I see them still. While he still spends much of his time sharing stories and insight from Alberta Street with the rest of the world, Jackson is keen on making sure that the history is preserved among Portlanders. 
When he visits his old neighborhood, both the people and the sense of community he grew up with are long gone. As a storyteller, he's made it his duty to ensure the stories aren't lost with them. You know, I, I bought his book and I read his book because Portland is, is history, the black community. I mean, this is where we grew up, you know, in our neighborhoods. And, you know, we gone, we spread out and keep the, the history alive in Portland and don't forget where we came from. You know, I really thank you, Mitchell. I appreciate the honor that you, um, you put me in your book. Um, I love you, bro. Residents that are transplants here, they don't have that same history between them. Like, they might be friends, but they don't have a legacy of friendship. Um, and so that, to me, that's Northeast Portland. Like, and if you don't have, if you wasn't doing flips down 6th Street, and you didn't go to King's School and spring off the springboard, and you didn't see the, know the lady who was peeking out of her curtain who was snitched to your grandparents, like, you lived a different kind of Portland. It's what I really try to do in my work is to make sure that that Portland isn't lost. My dedicated my literary life to making sure that Charles Kane and Elvis with the little arm and Pooh Bear who lived across the street don't get lost in this new shiny Portland with the new developments and the Kaiser Permanente on, you know, like, yeah, that's nice, but so is not forgetting that we existed. This podcast has been brought to you by Diversa in partnership with Alberta Main Street, X-Ray FM, and the Numbers.fm. Diversa creates new worlds to bring forth a larger truth.